Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome to the first Animated Girl Profiles Confidential of 2020 of the new decade. This is episode 67, and as you can see by the title and by the image popping up, we are talking about one of the most popular female characters to come out of the Disney afternoon, and that is Peg. Peg Pete, if you will, from Goof Troop. Now, Peg Pete, her name, of course, was based off Pete's original name when he debuted back in the 20s, late 20s, 30s, and 40s, that being, of course, Peg Leg Pete. And, of course, Pete's family also shares names similar to other aliases that he's had throughout his history on, you know, with Disney, or as part of Disney. Uh, his daughter, Pistol, is named after his Pistol Pete persona, and of course, PJ is based off the young uh, junior uh, child from one of the early 1930s, 1940s Donald Duck cartoons. But, what we're here to talk about, of course, like I said, is Peg. And again, she's one of the most popular Disney Afternoon female characters to come out of that block. And the reason being is because she has a very unique personality. You see, Peg was presented, or is presented, if you watch Goof Troop on Disney+, Plus, as a no-nonsense, fun-loving, take-no-crap uh, kind of woman. She's also at times very flirtatious, we'll put it that way. And what I mean by very flirtatious is when she kind of gets in a romantic mood or in a more kind of mood, she shows it. She, she shows it. In fact, there's even, um, I think, one episode called Goofing Up Society, or Goofing Up to Society, I think that's the name of it, where basically a lot of people, and there's a clip or two of this on YouTube, Daily Motion, and all that, where she basically kisses Goofy on the lips. She kisses him first on the forehead and then on the lips because he, um, ironically or incidentally or accidentally, gives her some ideas of how she can meet with this one lady that's like the uh, be all end all of the high society that Peg wants her and her family and even her friends to be part of. So, uh, so yeah, she shows affection towards Goofy, even going to those links, like I said, of even kissing him on the lips. And there's even flashbacks when Goofy has, uh, when Goof Troop presents, I should say, these flashback episodes, these story uh, episodes, if you will, where Goofy is teaching a lesson to his son, Max, by telling him a story of their ancestors. There's even one story that's based in the Old West, where at the end, it's shown that Peg's ancestor, uh, had fallen really out of nowhere for for Goofy's ancestor. And it's like, whoa, where did that come from? So that would kind of explain why there's sort of an attraction between Peg and Goofy. Um, but like I said, Peg is a kind-hearted, fun-loving, no-nonsense, take-no-crap-from-anybody character that really came into her own with the fans. I mean, the fans just got behind this character, you know, mainly because of the fact that Peg in Goof Troop is married to Pete. And Pete, of course, if you know about his history, is a very antagonistic-like character, although they kind of tone it down here to he's kind of like a tweener of an antagonist, if you will. He's kind of a... He's kind of like... I'll put it this way. He's a very antagonist. He's kind of an anti-protagonist. He's got a little bit... Basically, he still retains his antagonist side that he's been known for in Disney history. But he's also shown to be a, a loving father. Like, you know, if the story calls for it, he'll be basically like, you know, the good guy. Or at least try to do the right thing. Try to basically make up for what his past ancestors, his family that came before him, you know, had done. You know, basically make up for some of the crimes that they have committed. Although, being a descendant of the Pete uh, lineage, 
the P lineage, he um, of course is prone to committing acts of you know crime, treason, you know cheating, stuff like that. He's still prone to doing it. So you know, so uh, even though in the series it seems that they're trying to present him as trying to make up for that in some ways, depending on the episode and the writers and the story that are associated with it. Uh, even though, like I said, throughout the series he's trying to make up for it, he's still prone to it. In fact, the very first episode um, of the series uh, kind of shows that he even tries to, he's even prone to still doing that by even trying to sabotage his own wife's uh, chances at selling the house next door so he can bulldoze the house down to make room for a swimming hole where he could, a swimming slash fishing hole where he could fish, swim, basically have his own little getaway in the back of his house. So, yeah. This is why Peg has become very popular with fans because of the fact that she's very no nonsense with Pete. She doesn't she's no nonsense overall, but she is kind hearted, fun loving. But like I said, she has become popular because she takes no crap from Pete. Um, there's a few episodes where she basically knows what's going on and she lets Pete have it. It's like Pete thinks he's going to get away with something uh, in one episode. Or what I should say, and I am doing this unscripted and on the fly, there are times where Pete thinks he's going to get away with something in some episodes, and when he thinks he's gotten away with it, Peg, bam, is right on him to expose him for uh, the fraud or for the crime or for whatever he's tried to thought he was going to get away with. She basically exposes him and prevents him from you know, getting away with what he thought he would. As a matter of fact, there's a, a clip someone put up on Twitter, and then I looked up the, follow, the clip that's associated with it on YouTube. It's from the episode Wex, Lies, and Videotape, where basically, where basically um, Max wins a, a vacation for his dad, because, you know, his dad has done so much for him, he wants to give something back to his dad. So Pete learns about this, Basically makes a mold, tricks Goofy into, um, I, I don't know what he does, he kind of molds Goofy's face out of cement, he dumps Goofy's face on cement or something, I don't know, I gotta look at, gotta watch the episode again, but overall, Pete tries to disguise himself as Goofy in front of the world while Goofy and Max and everybody is watching at Goofy's house. And it's like, wait a minute, you know, because everybody sees this, and Peg instantly knows, oh, wait a minute, I know who that is. It is because Goofy's thinking, wait a minute, how am I there if I'm here? And Peg's like, you're not. I know that flabby belly anywhere. That's Pete. So basically what she does is she assures Max and Goofy, don't worry, Pe Pete's not going to get away with this. I know how to handle it. And literally... And she says the way she knows how to handle it is by using her weapon, her secret weapon, which is her mouth. And literally the next scene transitions basically to where Pete's driving up to the house thinking he's, got, he, thinking he's gotten scot-free, gotten away scot-free with what he's done. Thinking he's going to surprise his family with this Hawaiian vacation only for him to step foot right into the house. And the moment he enters, BAM! Peg hits him with uh, just a blast of yelling and all that. She basically, she basically, basically calls him out for the crap he just pulled. And he tries to save himself. Pete tries to say, "Well, I, I did it for you and the kids. You know, uh, you know, I didn't really mean it. And you know, I, I you know, I, I did it for you and the kids. I meant well." And and Peg's like, "Oh, bull crap, bull BS." You didn't do it for us and the kids. You did it for yourself. Uh, you do. And she basically told him right then and there. You basically give those tickets back to Max and Goofy. Goofy, or you're going alone. So, yeah. Basically, Peg. Basically, Peg takes no crap from Pete. And this is why she became and has become. And I guarantee you through Disney Plus this area of Goof Troop will probably become, once again, one of the more popular female characters. 
Because now you have a female character that takes no crap from Pete. She takes no crap from him. Um, and it shows. There are episodes in it where it shows. There's Peg of the Jungle. There's the one I just mentioned. And several others. She takes no crap from him. I mean, I mean, literally, there's a, what is it? There's an episode where uh, Pete gets a notice that if he doesn't uh, pay something, pay up on something, that his house is going to get towed away. So he tries to dump this uh, business that he bought, a pizza business, onto Goofy. And now Goofy thinks, okay, if they don't succeed, the house is gone. They're going to get towed. But no, what happens, Karma comes and bites Pete back on the butt, and he ends, and his house ends up getting towed. Even the guy tells him, no, sorry, dude, go in these mailboxes, you're next. Because I think what happened in one of the scenes is the mailboxes accidentally got switched to where Goofy's went over onto Pete's side, and Pete's went over onto Goofy's side. Anyway, how Peg is involved in this is basically um, after, it's a little after Pete gives the business to Goofy that Peg calls him out on it. And calls him out on it. And then it's later on, after the house is getting towed, owned and everything, she looks at Pete, she's like, Peter! And he's trying to like, oh, well, doubly dips. He was like this. <laughs> he's trying to explain. <laughs> and so, again, this is why Peg is so popular with, with the fans. And why, if you have Disney+, Plus, you need to check her character out. You need to check the, the episodes, uh, the series Goof Troop out. More specifically, you need to check this character out. You really do. Because, again, she's the kind of character that, I believe could really stand side by side with Minnie, Daisy, and Clarabelle. Oh, and if they didn't have Clarabelle, she'd be a perfect, you know, substitution or perfect kind of like, you know, replacement, as much as people may not like to hear that, for Clarabelle because she fits. She fits the mold. She fits the mold perfectly. I mean, again, they're all. I mean, she even calls Pete out sometimes on. You know, like I said, calls, she calls him out on some of his BS yes, and everything. Like during the Christmas special, Have Yourself a Goofy Little Christmas, she even points out that it's not Goofy's fault that his house burned down. It was Pete for pushing the button. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, she basically pins the blame on him. She even basically puts her foot down by saying, hey, Goofy staying, he cooks the end. So, so it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to see that. But here's the thing about Peg. That's not the only thing. Her standing up to Pete, not taking his crap, being no nonsense. I mentioned she's also fun-loving and kind-hearted. She even goes as far, in the as far as in the episode Puppy Love, to dress up for her son. And what do I mean? She dresses, basically what happens is she finds out about what's going on. So Max is able to convince her to dress up. I think he even lets Pistol in on it, so she could be like a test as to see how it works. He convin- Max basically convinces her to go with them to the school dance. And how? He convinces her to be her son's date, but under the disguise of like a teenager. And he comes up with this whole elaborate plan that actually works. That actually works. And when you see, and honestly, I got to go with this one character who, she, who basically Max has her sneak into the house of to pretend uh, she's this one character's big sister. You gotta agree with the with the kid there. It's like holy crap. <laughs> it's like wow. <laughs> and it's like who knew? It's like who knew, right? But yeah, she even goes as far as to bat to for she even goes as far or as to go to bat for her son by being his date. Although it kind of backfires a little bit because what happens is what they don't know is 
Pete's hanging around to check up on how his son's doing, right? Uh, with his date. Only to notice Max da dancing with her. So, so it's... Uh, <laughs> So it's really cool. It's really cool. I mean, it's a really cool scene in the in the episode Puppy Love. Like I said, you got to see that to know what I mean. But again, she is willing to go to bat for her son. That and that's huge. That is that is really huge. Huge. Oh, that it's really huge. But it's like it shows you that. It shows you again why she's known as a fun-loving, kind-hearted mom. I mean, even in, what is it, the episode T for Two, it shows she has a fun-loving side because of the fact that she has memories of being at the golf course and everything with her friends. So, it's cool. It's, it's really cool. I mean, it, it's, I know I say that a lot, but it's really cool to see these kind of things and see why Peg has become a very, has, is, and probably once again will be a very popular character uh, within Disney, and especially when it comes to an association association with Goofy, like with a series like Goof Troop. The only problem, though, the only uh, problem uh, that a lot of people have about Peg is she was not seen in the Goofy movie. The Goofy movie, it's obvious, takes place in the same continuity, so we think, but there's no Peg, there's no Pistol. And it makes you wonder what happened. It makes you theorize about what happened. And some people kind of think that, you know, perhaps in continuity, Peg had enough of Pete's bullcrap and divorced him. But as part of the divorce, the agreement, because, you know, parents, when they separate and divorce, make agreements that as part of it, one gets one kid over the other. And since Peg basically, obviously got pistol, she probably felt that, look, PJ just has to deal with this for the next few years, years and everything, and then he'll be free. She lets PJ uh, be with Pete. So, again, that's a theory that people have thrown around for why Peg and Pistol uh, were not in the uh, Goofy movie, although I think they should have been. Because basically, um, as Doug Walker, a.k.a. Nostalgia Critic, puts it, in one of his, descent, in one of his disney um, uh reviews, he basically says it's Goof Troop the movie, just like all of us look at it as. So, again, you know, it's, you know, it's a shame she wasn't in the movie, but, you know, maybe down the line she will be. I mean, there's a lot of people that actually make the, some of the, there's a lot of people that actually make uh, group pictures, uh, collages, if you will, that have all the characters. Some people name these group pictures and images as Goofy Troop, or... Goof Troop, and it shows the characters not just from Goof Troop, but from Goofy Movie. So, you know, again, it, it is it is a shame not to, to see Peg in the movie, but maybe we'll see her again down the line uh, in, some, in a future project, which again brings me to the fact that I believe she will once again be, become a very popular character. I mean, there is, I mean, let's not forget, you know, the Goof Troop version of Goofy is, a, is set to make a debut in appearance in the new DuckTales. So who's to say that Peg and Pete won't follow suit? You know, it's a thought. It's a thought, guys. It's a thought. But overall, though, Peg as a character is definitely very fun. She's a very fun character overall. Fun-loving, kind-hearted. Um, knows what, believe it or not, knows what's hip. She's like, she knows what's the it kind of thing. Like she understands the new generation, which is good. You can see that in some of the Goof Troop episodes. And basically, like I said, she's no nonsense, and she doesn't take crap from anybody, more specifically Pete. So, it's going to... So, yeah, she's definitely a character that, if you have not seen Goof Troop yet, you need to check Goof Troop out, especially with the episodes that I just... Um, kind of acknowledged here in this uh, in this profile I mean those episodes of course being like I said Rex, Lies and Videotape uh, T for Two um, what is it uh, Goofing Up the Social Ladder um, Peg of the Jungle 
Puppy Love. These are episodes that you should check out. Heck, there's even an episode where a rival car salesman tries to compete for Peg's love. A rival to Pete. And why does he compete for her love? It's real simple. Real simple. Uh, basically, uh, Pete, um, they go, basically Pete, her, and Goofy go on a, on a trip, on a ski trip. And this is one of the episodes, one of those few episodes that just focuses on these three as the main group. And you're thinking, this is actually pretty good. And it is. But like I said, the way this rival salesman becomes attracted to her is due to the fact that she stands up for Pete after he kind of embarrasses Pete. And she literally socks him in the face. Like, bam! So, so yeah, that's an episode you got to look at. Uh, and there are many. Like I said, there are many to look at that she's a part of. I mean, heck, there's even an episode where she, even a storybook episode, where she is portrayed as a mobster along with Pete. That's an interesting take as well. So, overall, I would definitely suggest, like I said, definitely suggest checking this, uh, checking out Peg in Goof Troop. Goof Troop right now, if you have it, is on Disney+. Plus. And it'll be worth watching, especially the episodes that I mentioned. But overall, that's going to pretty much do it for the 67th, 67th edition, and the first edition of the new decade and the new year, 2020. The first edition, the 67th edition, I should say, of the Animated Girls Profile Confidential. Let me know what you guys think down below. I'd love to hear from each and every one of you. And I am out.